Well, all right. Looks like it's a couple minutes after the hour, so let's go ahead and get started with our 2019 Topps Chrome Sapphire Baseball Random Player One Box Break Number Seven. Uh, I know that there's quite a few folks who have not broken with us before that have bought into this break. So if you happen to be watching live and you have any questions, feel free to put your questions in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them uh, at some point during the break. Just like with all of our random player group breaks, we list everybody in random.org in the order of which they purchase their spots. We'll randomize that list five times and then we'll match that up against an alphabetical player list from the product. Good luck, everybody. I'm guessing you're pretty tired, Woody, if you fell asleep during the break. Either that or I need to do a better job of, of inflecting my vocal tones. I might sound like my junior year physics teacher, Mr. Dibe, who was the most monotone man I've ever met in my life. All right. Good luck, everybody. Once. Twice. Three times. Four. And lucky number five. And we've got Mr. Sports Cards 85 in the top spot. And. And. And we've got high 219400 in the last spot. So here's our list. I'm going to cut and paste this over to the right and sort by everyone's eBay IDs. And then we will scroll through said list before we open our box. If you happen to miss a player or a card or two that you happen to have, don't worry. Once everything is opened, I'll actually go back through the list and we'll see who got which cards. So if you hit in the break, you will definitely see it. And this is a super long list. I used to read the list. This product actually got me to the point where I stopped reading the list. I just scroll through them now. But this is the pro this is the reason why I don't read them anymore. Because I think I would have lost my voice reading this, or trying to anyway. All right, here we go. Yeah, Mark, and I think that's really part of the appeal of this product in a in a roundabout way. Is if you pull a big rookie card, if you get Alonzo or Tatis or you know, Jimenez or just any of the, the big rookie cards. Like, it means something because to hit one of those, you have to open 23 of these boxes, theoretically. And they're incredibly pricey. I know they weren't as pricey, obviously, when Top sold them direct. But, uh, you know, now especially. So if you get anything like that, uh, they have some definite value. And even the parallels have value. You get one or two. You get one per box. Every now and then you'll see a second one in a box. And plus the cards, just the base cards themselves look awesome. And even those go for three or four bucks. It's just a very unique product that's handled outside of the traditional distributor channel. So that kind of adds a little different flavor to the secondary market positioning of it. Yeah, John, I feel like that was probably happening. And honestly, by the end of the night, after I do three or four breaks, I sounded like I would smoked like eight packs of cigarettes. It wasn't good. So now I just scroll. And I always recap at the end, so I figure if, you know, if somebody hits, they're going to know it. 
And if somebody missed something, they can always rewind. Uh, if they're on the live feed, they can rewind, or if they're watching the video afterwards, they can always, you know, it's pretty easy to fast forward to the beginning and scroll through this section real quick and see where you're, since it's everybody's in alphabetical order, you can go down and see, okay, I got this player and that player. No, MRA Pirates, that's not a bad start. I guess I better get my sleeves ready. Paddock, that'd be a nice rookie card to have. He might. I don't. I don't know if he does. MRA. I think he does. I thought he had the Tatis. He might have all the four supers from this. He definitely enjoys the Sapphire. Without question. I think it's nice that Phil enjoys cards. Kind of shines a little bit of a broader light on the hobby as a whole. Are you serious, Fred? I just now saw that. So you hit Tomei and Mo Vaughn in the in the Ultra Pack. That's pretty funny. That's good. That was a good pack. Yeah, it's some nice stuff. Obviously, it's something he enjoys in his retirement.
This is like the list that never ends. Oh, really? Where are they racing at this week? Is it the is it the Xfinity race or is it the Cup race? CJB, I go by the eBay name. It was up at the top. I, I passed it probably about five minutes ago. If you'll remind me when I get to the end, I'll scroll back up there real quick so you can see them before we start opening. But you are on the list. Cibatine. Is that how it's pronounced? I hope so. Pocono. Yikes. I have to say, as a of all of the NASCAR tracks that are on the circuit, and I don't count the road courses, for whatever reason, I've just never enjoyed watching races at Pocono. Which is crazy because the area is beautiful, and I've actually been there a couple times. I've never been to the track, but I've been through that area a couple times, and it's just beautiful, beautiful part of the country. But can't stand the the course at Pocono. Just, Never have liked it. Yeah. And where they're downshifting going into the corner, I, I don't know about that. That just, that seems a bit much. And that's just me, though. No, RJ, it's not. Road course is not life, not in NASCAR circles, sir. You can keep that for your your twenty four hour stuff, but not not in NASCAR. Ovals, sir, ovals. Yeah, Woody. When I watched it a lot, I was kind of the same way. It was nice just to have it on the TV, even the road courses. So I totally get where you're coming from. <sighs> RJ, man, F1, nobody's, we're not. I don't think we're about the F1 life here, RJ. I mean, I get what you're saying, though. It, it Technically, if you want to get technical, it's probably the highest level of auto racing in the world, and I get that. I'm not going to argue that by any means, but... So they're doing a double header in Pocono. Well, they've got to make up races. So I know they've had a really odd schedule, so I never know what's going on. Yeah, those road courses, and they're going over those chicanes. Like, that can't be good. Something eventually is going to break. But I guess that's the beauty of, of, of most NASCAR tracks is they've all got a very distinct shape and size. And now I know some of the mile and a half are cookie cutter. The Kansas track is boring as watching grass grow, in my opinion. Um, the California Speedway is just, you know, it in Michigan just seem boring as all get out. It seems like they're going to come down to gas mileage and if you can play that game appropriately. But... I prefer uh, more of the unique southern tracks, Bristol, Martinsville, Darlington, you know, that kind of thing. I've watched a lot of F1. 
I don't not like it. It just, I don't know. It seemed a bit much for my taste. And I grew up on stock car racing, so I think that's one of those things that whatever you grew up watching, that's what you kind of, even as an adult, gravitate towards. Wow, drag racing, okay. Well, that's, you know, I've watched my fair share of NRHA. I have, I grew up near the Bristol tracks, so I've seen my fair share of NASCAR races there, and I've also seen my fair share of NRHA races at the uh, drag strip, too. Bristol's such an interesting setup. Years and years ago when I was in college, you could make a pretty penny just flipping tickets to the Bristol Cup races. Now, this was before it had expanded, before the seating expansion that took place. This was like in the mid-90s. So I think the capacity was about 85,000. And there was like a 10-year wait to get season tickets for the track. Good gracious, this list takes forever. Talladega scares me a little bit, Heath. And it's one of those things like you want to cap the speed because you don't want people flipping and dying, but then when you cap the speed, then the racing is boring and everybody's wound up in a tight pack and if somebody gets a little bit out of line then again you've got some terrible crash and people risking life and limb and so it's kind of a you know it's a double-edged sword i guess all righty now that we've went through our list that never ended let's open our box and see what we get Good luck, everybody. There are packs, empty box. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight packs. Alrighty, pack number one. Oh, we've got color in our first pack. First card is Trevor Williams. Like how the light hits that. Looks good. I might have a little bit too much light going when I set them up a couple hours ago. The sky was overcast and now the sun's shining a little bit. Next card is Christian Yelich Lead Leaders. Nice picture in the old school Brewers uniform. And our parallel in this box is Salvador Perez Orange. And that is serial numbered 22 of 25. And 
And our last card in the pack is Gary Sanchez. Heath, there is a lot of ways to enjoy cards nowadays. And it's probably a little different than from when you left it. But a lot of ways. Just depends on what you're into. A lot of people like to open packs. Some people build sets. They buy cards of their favorite player or team. Some folks buy spots and breaks. There's just all kinds of ways. Just depends on what you're into. Pack number two. Eric Thames, or Thames, I never do know how to pronounce his name. He has on a real old school Milwaukee uniform. And our next card is Ronaldo Lopez. I swear I've pulled this guy in every box of this I've opened. I'm not sure why. Well, I think he. I think a lot of people find that you know there's a fair amount of entertainment in it, and there's a certain fun factor to it. Ooh, Ben Attendi. How about that? And as you know, there's not a lot of card shops around today. Not as many as there were years ago. And I think that uh, the live streams of breaks. I think that's kind of the new card shop where if you'll notice, you know, even in our humble little break, there's quite a few of us sitting here chatting, having a nice little conversation. And I kind of feel like that's the new card shop. Not that they're all went away because they haven't. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way towards card shops. They're just not as plentiful as they were, let's say, 20, 25 years ago. And this is how technology has kind of helped re-bolster uh, the camaraderie of the hobby. And our last card is Xander Bogertz. So we had some nice socks in that pack. We haven't had rain here all week, Woody. I'd like to have a little bit. I think it is, Heath. I, I mean, you know, of course I'm biased because I do breaks. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's a, a good time. I think it's a, a good way to congregate with other hobbyists and card people. People seem to enjoy it for sure. Ildemaro Vargas. Yosemiro Pettit. Rick Porcello. And then Orlando Arcia. Rounds out pike number three. On to our next pack. Oh. Mark, hope you're still watching, sir. Cole Calhoun. And then... Eric Fetty, today. And then our next card is Nikki Del Monaco. That's right, Mark. You do. It's actually pretty one of the better rookie cards we've pulled out of this. Chris Paddock. For Mark. How about that? Not too shabby. 
not too shabby. How about that? Excellent. On to pack number five. And our first card is Josh Donaldson. Our next card is Pedro Baez. And then our next card is Taylor Davis. Right in mid-swing. And then the last card in the pack is Hunter Dozier. On to pack number six. First card is Eric Lauer. And then our next card is Aaron Judge and Mike Stanton, the powerful pair. Our next card is Joey Votto. And then our last card in the pack is Salvador Perez. So whoever had Salvador Perez will get the base card and the orange parallel. Doubling up off of one spot. On to pack number seven. And our first card is Adam Engel. Well, that's a great photo, too. And in those 82 socks throwback uniforms as well. Ooh, there's something purple in this pack. I don't know if it's another parallel or if it's the auto. And then Nick Tropanino, which I always mispronounce. But luckily you can see it on the screen so you know who I'm talking about. And then our next card is a Josh Hader Purple Parallel. Now you usually just get one parallel per box. But I felt like when we got the, the Perez in the first pack I thought we might hit color again because we've done that in a previous box. And that is serial numbered one of ten. How about that? Yeah, he does kind of look like he's Velcroed on the wall. And our last card is David Mr. Freeze. Down to our last pack. And we haven't hit our auto yet. Hmm. It's in there though. Here I'll show you how I know. There's four cards in that pack. You can kind of see that the stock on the edge on one of them is different. A little different there. That's the auto. The autos and the color parallels were printed uh, before the main run was done. Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco. And 
and our auto in our box is Cole Stewart. Nice signature too. That young man has excellent penmanship. Somewhere, his third grade teacher is extremely proud because they did an excellent job. Just saying. And then our next card is Willie Adamus. And then our last card is Alex Bregman. Alrighty, so now that we've opened all of our packs, let's go back through our list and see who got what. I'm going to go ahead and do the Bregman since it's card number 700 and that goes to high 219400. Congrats on that. Our Willie Adamus goes to Heath Burns. How about that, Heath? Good, good, good. Congrats on that. Then our Carlos Carrasco goes to TJS Sports Cards. Congrats on that. And then our David Freeze goes to SoCal Bio 1203. Congrats. And then our Nick Trapanino goes to Bob's Cards and Coins. Congrats, Bob. Thanks for joining us this evening. Then our Adam Engel, where it does look like he's Velcroed to the outfield wall, goes to James Alt Zero. Congrats on that. And then our Salvador Perez Base and Orange Parallel, both go to James Finn 49. Congrats on that. Doubling up. Then our Joey Votto goes to Murr 609. Congrats on that. And then our powerful pair Stanton and Judge goes to Joe Luca J Zero. Congrats on that. Then our Eric Lauer goes to Joe Spio 43. Congrats. And then our Hunter Dozier goes to Daha 9602. Congrats on that, David. And then our Taylor Davis goes to Michael Criswell 8. Congrats on that. And then our Pedro Baez goes to P. Iglesias 20. Congrats on that. Then our Josh Donaldson goes to Fudiel 53. Congratulations on that. I knew that was coming, Heath. And then our Chris Paddock goes to Comic Bust Card Sword Collector. Congrats on that. Not Word Collector, Sword Collector. Just so everybody's straight. Make sure we're clear on that. And then our Nikki Delmonico goes to And Will 9033. Congrats on that. You have to buy your own trash can, Heath. Sorry. Shipping, sh you know, I'd buy it for you, but the shipping is just crazy. And then our Eric Fetty goes to James Alt Zero. Doubling up. Congrats on that. And then the Cole Calhoun 
goes to Mr. Sports Cards 85. Congrats. Doubling up. And then our Orlando Orsia is the card right above. That goes to Rob Mile 8342. Congrats on that. And then our Rick Porcello goes to C Shea 7576. Congratulations on that. And then our Yosemir Pettit or Petite. Say pet it goes to Homeworks 5. Congrats on that. And then our Ildemargo Vargas goes to High 219400. Doubling up. Congrats. And our Xander Bogerts goes to High 219400. Third card, congrats on that. And then our Andrew Benatendi goes to high 219400. Killing it. Congrats on that. And our Ronaldo Lopez goes to Homeworks 5. Doubling up. Congrats. And our Eric Thames goes to James Finn 49 doubling up got a lot of folks doubling up in this one this evening our Gary Sanchez goes to DeLos Dodds congratulations on that then our Christian Yelich league leader card goes to Painter Boy 11-9 Congrats on that. And then our Trevor Williams goes to high 219400. My goodness. I think that's five from this one. Outstanding. And then our Josh Hader Purple Parallel, serial numbered one of ten, goes to Mr. Smith's Good Things. And I don't know what the end of that is, but congrats. You got the hater purple parallel. And last, but certainly not least, I'm going to scroll down to my little cheat sheet list that I have below my checklist to see what card number our Cole Stewart corresponds to. Cole Stewart, 177. And that goes to Homeworks 5. Congratulations on that. Third hit in the break. Excellent. Excellent. So there's our Cole Stewart Auto. Josh Hader Purple. And Salvador Perez Orange. So we actually hit two good things and stuff. Thanks for reminding me of that, Mark. So we actually got two parallels. Which does happen sometimes if you hit one in the first or second pack. So not too shabby. Well, that concludes our 2019 Topps Chrome Sapphire Baseball Random Player One Box Break Number 7. Thanks to everybody that bought spots in the break. As always, we appreciate you all supporting our breaks. Thanks to all of you who watched live with us on the feed this evening. And we'll be back here in about five minutes with our Elements Football Pick Your Player One Box Break Number 3. Thanks again, everybody. Never can figure out how I want that to sit. I'll just sit it on its back. It'll be fine.